Welcome back. Stocks and other financial exchanges have been hit hard by the global financial crisis. Investment Technology Group is the owner of the oldest block trading equity system. Our Margaret Popper is live at the Sandler O'Neill Global Exchange and Electronic Trading Conference here in New York. And she is joined by Robert Gasser, the CEO of ITG. Margaret. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, Robert, I wanted to ask you, how has the recent market turmoil affected block trading? You're obviously one of the companies that is, dominates the block trading market. Right, right. Well, looking back uh, on this crisis, which really was precipitated probably in the summer of 07, it's actually changed markedly. Uh, we look at 2008, we see two large liquidation trades, one in January, one in October. Uh, the one in October I would, I would describe as close to a panic in terms of what it, what it caused in terms of volatility. And with that volatility came a huge change in bid-ask spreads. And so what, what I mean by bid-ask spreads, the, the level at which you buy and the level at which you sell a stock. And for that to, to gap in that uh, proportion at 2x is something we've never seen in our lifetimes. Uh, now, when that happens, do people stop putting in huge block orders or, and start dribbling things into the market? Well, I think originally when that liquidation trade happened in October, they were finding liquidity wherever they, they could, whether or not it was a block trade or an algorithmic trade or, or an odd lot for that matter. But oh, as, as things uh, stabilized going into the end of the year and the, and the first quarter of 2009, what we saw was a very pronounced change in the behavior that traders had relative to their own what we call benchmarks. So every institutional trader in the U.S. and, and globally is basically measured on their own performance, and they're measured against what we describe as a benchmark. So right. Now, you're talking about traders at big institutions like absolutely. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup. Well, uh, we're talking about buy-side institutions, so large institutions uh, like a Fidelity, funds, yeah, mutual sure. fund right. uh, uh, complexes, pension asset managers, uh, global uh, investment uh, uh, corporations that you know represent sovereigns, things like that. And so you were saying what, you, what you've seen this quarter is how things change. Well, what's interesting is I think a lot of traders it, 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 with high volatility uh, being uh, what it was at the beginning of the year, I think were very reticent to try to beat their benchmarks. And so what we saw was a lot of folks put in orders that were market on close. That happened on the close. That they're, if they're benchmarked to that price, it makes it very easy. So, so they just submit all their orders. Trading day, and then everything rushes in at the end. There's a lot of that. Now, Qu is clearly. there? Does that potentially put pressure on the system to handle these trades? It does, put some, it does put some pressure on the trade uh, on the on the system, but it also creates more dislocation. Uh, I think than we've seen in the past uh, around the close. I see, so, and so you're seeing it's harder to get bid and ask prices to meet at the close. Yeah, I, that's that's a good way to uh, describe it. Okay. And we also saw some closet volatility trading. So you know, guys that were long only, guys that are supposed to hold for a very long period of time, were actually in there trading intra week in names that had a lot of volatility. You know, financials. Uh, you know, City and Bank America were 13 percent of total volume in Q1, which is a you know wow. that that number jumps off the page. Now, you're, you do um, electronic trading systems. Yeah. It seems as though there's been a massive move toward electronic trading away from the, the agency brokerage yeah. that you also do. And you've seen electronic trading eat into your agency commissions. Is that a trend that you expect to see continue? Well, I, I think it is. I mean, I, you know, clearly the buy side has been empowered uh, to, uh, to trade directly into the marketplace and to become less codependent on their traditional intermediaries. And uh, in an environment like this one where there's not a lot of capital being committed by large uh, firms uh, by virtue of all the other issues they have around uh, their, their capital bases, uh, it's, it's a perfect environment for us uh, to empower the buy side, to give them the technology and the ability to source liquidity. But it's going to significantly it. change your business mix. Uh, it will over time. I, I think that you know we're, we're a firm that's very comfortable operating in either an agency mode or an electronic mode. But and you had have, a very tough first quarter because of this dynamic. We've had a very tough first quarter because of the changes that I described earlier in terms of market on close orders being a, a bigger proportion of our overall order flow. I so see. that's the, probably the lowest value add we have as a firm. It's basically a pipe to an exchange. Exchange manages that that matching or auction process, and then the trade is over. So then does this trend of squeezing commissions and squeezing the cost of trading that's been going on for the last 10, 15 years, yes. it's still continuing? I, 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 you can't assume it's, it's going to end. Uh, and, and quite frankly, we've been a big part of that. We've been you know, making trading more efficient uh, and, and taking out the role of an intermediary, which is in many ways what we do. Certainly, we've been a big part of changing the, uh, the cost structure of the asset management trading business. All right. Well, Robert Gasser from ITG, thank Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Mark, back to you. Margaret Popper, Margaret, thanks.